Hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 13, verses 1 through 9 and 18 through 23. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. Some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell in rocky places, where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word. But the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. When I spoke three weeks ago about all the places Jesus ministered, I mentioned him preaching from a boat to crowds gathered on the beach. That is where he tells this parable of the sower. The following week, as Roger alluded to in his sermon last Sunday, I spoke about Jesus' ministry as being one of peace in action. And this past Sunday, I talked about being alert to God working all around us. When we have become alert to God surrounding us in even unexpected places and faces, when our eyes are open to the wonders of God around us, when we are present to the presence of God. When we enter every place as if it is God's space, we have prepared ourselves, like Jesus, to take action. Becoming alive in Christ is just the beginning. Being aware of God's purposes leads into action. But be careful. We do the preparing, but God does the planning. Let's look more closely at that parable of the sower. The first seed that the farmer scattered fell on the road, where it remained on the surface to be taken, and birds ate it. The passage explains this as referring to those people who hear the word of God, but who are all talk and no results, who eat their own words. If we expand on that thinking, it is not only the people who don't listen to the word of God, but the people who are not alert to God around them, who keep trying all of the same things in the ways they have always done, even when they produce less and less, or fail to produce results at all. As an example, many businesses have had to adapt during coronavirus, changing their methods or distribution in order to continue operating. Those more reluctant or unable to find ways to change have struggled as temporary difficulties have become a new reality. Functioning only on a surface level leaves no foundation for growth when it is necessary. In our own lives, we are called to live more deeply as flexible, malleable Christians of clay with God as our potter. The second seed the passage mentions fell in the gravel and grew quickly, 
but with no roots, withering in the heat of the sun. The gospel explanation is that that seed represents people who listen to the word of God, but can't persevere through difficulty. If we take it a step further, those people who start to take action, but experience failure and give up or fall back on old ways. Pastor Mark R. Burnham, author and pastor of Grace Presbyterian Church, took this perspective and wrote, the church today needs to hear this message. You will not always succeed. Failure is part of ministry. Remember that only one out of four succeeded in the parable. So try many different things, throw out lots of seed, and see what happens. A church not failing at anything is perhaps one not risking enough. Jake is certainly one of my inspirations in the field of trying new things. Ever since I met him, he has been learning about something different. Cooking, painting, crocheting, composing music, fishing, pearl identification, tennis, handbells, piano, guitar. That's not to say that everything he tries is his favorite thing he's ever done or the thing that he's best at. But sometimes the things he tries are just what he needs for that moment in time. A couple of years ago, he got really interested in wood carving and wood burning. He got the tools and he ended up hand making personalized wood burn coasters for our wedding with the names of all our guests. When he decided he wanted to learn photography and digital editing, he was able to start his own small business doing something he enjoys. And little did we know he would be fully prepared for us needing to adapt and do sermons online. Even when an opportunity seems like it may hold no benefit, one opportunity may lead to others we never would have imagined. Even if we fail, we fail together. I was overjoyed to hear that by congregational vote, you wanted me to move to halftime, still maintaining the pastoral team of both Roger and I, and I am excited to try new things with you and to start new projects, and to plan new things, and to experience what is to come. With grace, if we stumble or fail together along the way. The third example of seed in Jesus' parable is the seed that fell in the weeds and was strangled, which represented people who listened to the word of God, but were too preoccupied with other things. In our context, it could be the people who see all the new opportunities, but never make time for them or are motivated to find them worth doing. Some of you may already be imagining what new opportunities could be ahead for you. For others, the thought of another hobby or a time commitment may fill you with dread rather than expectation. Take a deep breath. The action called for doesn't always have to be quite so literal. The actor Morgan Freeman in one of his movies gives this fantastic word of wisdom. If someone prays for patience, do you think God gives him patience? Or does he give him the opportunity to be patient? If he prayed for courage, does God give him courage? Or does he give him opportunities to be courageous? If someone prayed for the family to be closer, do you think God zaps them with warm, fuzzy feelings? Or does he give them opportunities to love each other? For some, it may be as simple as pulling our heads out of the weeds and recognizing the opportunities that were already there. If we are praying to understand one another, is God instead giving us opportunities for understanding? If we have been praying for unity, has God instead been giving us reasons to come together? The fourth and final seed fell on good earth, producing harvest. This is the soil of opportunity. 
This parable carries a strong message of discipleship. Deborah J. Capp, a professor of ministry at McCormick Seminary, highlighted this, saying, Good farming, like good discipleship, is found somewhere in between orderly planning and things we cannot control. Continuing, discipleship delights in God's abundance. At the heart of any farmer's optimism is the experience of bounty. We may have lost the tomatoes, but this year's kohlrabi crop was abundant. The cabbages were plentiful and the squashes grew and grew and grew. There is so much to be thankful for and truth be told, it all comes by God's abundant grace. She concludes, we just have to get things started. It is God who will make them grow. What are opportunities you may be missing or cautiously avoiding? Grandpa has been in Pennsylvania for two years and we rarely saw him. He learned to use Zoom for his church during coronavirus. Now we video chat as a family every other week. We were missing that opportunity. What is something you never thought you would do, but now might be just the time for it? I think of all the people who have been making masks for others, something they probably never would have thought of doing. What do we see other people doing that would be richer for us joining in? Writing books, making videos, doing things outside, starting groups. I don't know about you, but I don't feel like I've reached all I can become or fulfilled my full potential. So I never know what the next piece of the puzzle will be. Certainly, even when we have lived one day to the fullest, the next day dawns anew. What seeds will we find scattered in our soil of opportunity? In closing, I'd like to read from the accompanying lectionary text, Romans chapter 8, verses 10 through 11, from the message interpretation. It stands to reason, doesn't it, that if the alive and present God who raised Jesus from the dead moves into your life, he'll do the same thing in you that he did in Jesus, bringing you alive to himself. When God lives and breathes in you, and he does as surely as he did in Jesus, you are delivered from that dead life. With his spirit living in you, your body will be as alive as Christ. So don't you see that we don't owe this old do-it-yourself life one red cent? There's nothing in it for us, nothing at all. The best thing to do is give it a decent burial and get on with your new life. God's spirit beckons. There are things to do and places to go. If you'd like to pray with me, I'm going to be reading from the Blue Brethren Worship Hymnal, number 680. 680. God of all life, we thank you for the signs of your love that surround us for sun and warmth and all that comes to life within creation, for all that sleeps within the earth awaiting birth. We praise you for the wisdom of your care, water on the earth, sunlight on our spirits, hands on blinded eyes. Continue to touch us, reach out to us with compassion and forgiveness that we may receive your gifts, that we may know your love and grace and rise to new life in Jesus Christ. Amen.